When dealing with return on an investment, it's important to consider both taxation and the impact of inflation. Are you really getting ahead? What rate are you really getting ahead at? So when we are looking at how much our nominal return is, that's like the quoted or stated or the amount that we're told we're getting, we have to reduce it by the effects of taxation and by inflation. So there's the actual formula, but I'm going to do instead an approximation that simplifies it somewhat and gets you an answer that's very close to the actual answer. So let's consider a question because it's easier when looking at a question to understand how the approximation works. So let's say that your nominal return is 5%. Inflation is 2%, taxes are 36%. If you're dealing with your real rate of return, so not your after-tax real rate of return, but just your real rate of return, the approximation is just nominal minus inflation. And again, this is an approximation. So your real rate of return would just be 5 minus 2 equals 3%. The actual, if you plug it into the formula, the actual is 2.94%. The approximation will always get you a number that's slightly larger, that's slightly larger than the, than the uh, actual number. So the approximation will get you a number that's slightly larger than the actual. If you're looking at the after-tax real, there's two steps. First of all, I have to reduce it by taxes. So consider, it. pretend for a minute that instead of a percentage, it's a dollar value. So let's say that you earned $5 and you have 36% tax. How much do you keep? Well, you keep one minus 36%. So you'd keep 64% times five bucks gives you $3.20. Works exactly the same for an interest rate. If it's instead of a dollars, if it's 5%, you would keep 64% of, of that amount, you keep 3.2%. And then I again just subtract off inflation. 3.2% minus 2 equals 1.2%. If you actually plugged it into the formula, you would get 1.18%. So my after tax real, deal with taxes, so remove the taxes and then subtract off inflation.